There we are. XB1 is supersonic, faster than the speed of sound. Those of you joining us, my name's Mike Bannister. I used to be the British Airways chief pilot for Concorde, flying supersonically for 22 years. So I kind of got a feeling about what's been going on today. But before we get into this Q&A session, will you join me in welcoming to the stage Geppetto and Blake, who've made all of this happen. Well done. <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Up here with me, Blake Scholl, the founder and CEO of Boom Supersonic, and Geppetto, who flew the aircraft today. So the dead simple question to start off with, Geppetto, is how do you feel? Uh, well, I'm not sure my brain's fully caught up with me yet. I think it might still be flying supersonic. <laughs> a little bit shaky, but just excited to be here and grateful to, uh, grateful to be a part of this team. And you enjoyed it so much, you had three goes. <laughs> Yeah, um, that was a contingency that we had briefed. Um, if, we, if we didn't get everything we needed on, on one supersonic run, then we briefed that we'd be able to turn around and do it again. Uh, so I don't think anyone in the control room was surprised. It wasn't exactly the plan, but we had a, it, was a, it was a backup plan. And Blake, this has been your brainchild. It's been your baby for the last 10 or more years. How does it feel to see this coming to fruition right now, right here? It, it's a little, it's a little surreal, if I'm being honest. I think it's still sinking in. You know, there, there were so many days uh, on the on the road to today where it, it wasn't obvious that we would get here, and uh, and here we are. And I just feel, uh, I feel really proud, feel really grateful, and uh, I feel really determined uh, that we're going to keep doing this until supersonic flight's way less exciting because it's just the normal way we fly. Geppetto, back to you. When, when I was in amongst the crowd just now, I, one of the people out there asked me, you know, how does it feel to fly supersonic? So how does it feel to fly supersonically three times in one go? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's always exciting. Uh, there's something, something special about going faster than the speed of sound. Uh, I'm sure you remember your first time going supersonic, right? Uh, it was probably in an airplane that had done it before. <laughs> Yeah, so, <laughs> so, so was mine. <laughs> uh, but I remember that feeling like as I was getting ready to push the throttles up for the first time in, a, in an F-18 Super Hornet. And uh, like, it, it felt like I was climbing up a roller coaster. Like, I, hey, I, know, I know I'm going to be okay. Like, my brain knows I'm going to be okay. But am I really going to be okay? Is, uh, is, is everything really going to be okay? So I push the throttles up. And then, you know, you, you see the, the Mach number finally tick over to Mach 1. And you're like... Well, is, is that it? Is that really all there is to it? Uh, today was a little bit different than that. Um, this, is the, this was the first time that the airplane had never done it before. Um, and you know, certainly our, our models and our data had indicated that it was going to be safe, it was going to be predictable, and it was going to be easy. Uh, but you don't, you don't really know until you push the throttles up and, and you go for it. Today I was uh, I was pleasantly surprised that it, it was actually safe and easy and and predictable. I'm sorry, I was not surprised that it was safe. Uh, <laughs> there was no doubt in my mind that that was going to be the case. But it was it was smooth, it was predictable, uh, and it felt great. Uh, if I remember what you said yesterday. You said you were more nervous about the press conference than, than the flight. <laughs> Uh, one hundred percent, yes. <laughs> Quite rightly. <laughs> I was very jealous uh, thinking of you flying the aircraft because it was absolutely fantastic. But to put it in context, I mean, we talk about the first flight of supersonic flight of XB1, but Geppetto is the first pilot ever, the first pilot ever, to fly an independently developed civilian aircraft supersonically. This just has never happened before. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mike. If I could just point out that uh, you know this isn't this isn't my milestone. This is the this is the team's milestone. Like everyone at the, at the company, Blake having the courage to actually like make this happen to to put yourself out there and start a company with this with this seemingly impossible goal. Uh, but you know everyone from you know Jordan Rosas who kept us fed and happy, and like Steve Graziano who installed all the rivets. And especially, like you know, even Doc Shoemaker, who built this incredible culture of safety and, and flight test, uh, you know, this is this is everyone's milestone. I, I was just lucky to be the the one to push the throttles up. I've been lucky enough to be close to Boom for some time now. One thing that strikes me, Blake, is your ability to gather around you all the right people. 
the key real experts in every field. I mean, tell us something about that, how you do it, and how you've got this sensational team working for you and with you. So if I think back to the, the earliest days of starting the company, um, uh, I, I would tell people that I, I wanted to build a supersonic jet, and I could always tell the first question was, and people didn't always say it out loud, but the first question was always, are you crazy? And uh, if I could convince people that the answer was just maybe, just maybe no, then uh, the next question was, how do I get involved and help? And I, I think the, the mission is what really makes this possible. Um, the world needs supersonic flight. Passengers deserve it. Airlines need an alternative that's better. Uh, America needs to build the next generation of airplanes. Uh, and the, 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 the significance of the mission is what causes great people to come and be part of this. Uh, whether it's the uh, Geppetto and Doc who flew the airplane for the first time, to the, the engineers that designed it, the technicians that put it together, the investors that uh, did what their peers said was crazy and, and backed us, to the, the, the airlines like United who put a deposit down before we'd even flown XB-1, um, and American and Japan Airlines who was the, the first airline to, to back us. And, and why? It's because everybody wants supersonic flight. And um, it's, it's not easy, but it is possible. And uh, if we gather, uh, gather just the very best people in the world, um, we can do it. And of course, there have been so many naysayers who say it can't be done. But you guys have proved and your team have proved today that it can be done. So Geppetto, when you're flying the airplane, how much goes through your mind about how this really is a step forward to the future, to the next big step forward with Overture? Is this part of your consideration? Uh, while I'm flying the airplane, certainly not. Uh, this is this is flight test. You know, there's there's too much going on. I'm just very focused on what the airplane is telling me. Uh, working with the control room, like am I am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Um, managing the fuel, managing the airspace, and just making sure that we have a, a successful event. None of that's going through my head during uh, while we're flying. <laughs> But after you fly, you have, after you've flown, I guess you think about it. We were talking earlier on on the broadcast about this is not the last flight of XB1. Um, what are the plans for the next flight, Jabetta? Well, we're uh, we're planning on flying it one more time, uh, and the next flight obviously will be supersonic. Um, and we're working with NASA on something that I'm pretty excited about, uh, which should hopefully produce some pretty pretty exciting uh, imagery. And Blake, the next steps for Boom Supersonic. Tell us a little bit more about Overture in the detail and Symphony, the engine. Yeah, well, it's uh, it, what we have that's so special in XB1 is a, a supersonic jet made out of airliner technology. And I think w one of the things that surprises people the most is we really didn't invent anything. This is, uh, this is really 20-year-old 787-level technology uh, deployed in service of a different goal. And... Um, we, we, we started out with kind of a, a sketch of Overture. We didn't even know it was called Overture yet. Uh, and the one thing we knew for certain is we didn't have it quite right, and we didn't know everything we needed to know to pull it off. So we, we shrank down to one-third scale, uh, and we said, let's go build design, uh, design build, fly, and, and learn, and then take all those learnings and turn our attention back to, to the, the big airplane that we all get to fly on, and that's what Overture is. And, and so after, after next week's uh, final flight of XB-1, our attention goes back on, on that Overture airplane. And, uh, and so we will be, uh, be advancing that. You know, where we are today, it's uh, just about time to, quote unquote, break the engineer's pencils. Uh, meaning we, we have a design that, is, that, that accomplishes what we need to accomplish, and it's ready, we're gonna go take it to production. So the, the next things we get to look forward to, the, the Symphony engine, uh, and that's, that's our engine that powers Overture. Um, it is the, uh, the first purpose-built engine for civilian supersonic flight. Concorde, of course, had what, a military engine that was sort of adapted. This is a brand, uh, brand new engine, not a brand new kind of engine, uh, but a brand new engine. That'll, uh, the first prototype of that will run later this year. And we're about 18 months away from starting to uh, bu physically build the first, uh, the first overture. And uh, our, our goal is to roll it off the line in about three years and uh, put it in the skies in about four. Fantastic. It's in the skies in about four years, ladies and gentlemen, to see a wonderful, uh, wonderful symphony aircraft taking to the skies. And Geppetto, can you, are you looking forward to that moment? Yeah, very much. Like, 
XP1 was the, the proof that we could do it. We've proven we can do it, but this doesn't, this doesn't change anyone's life. The Overture is going to make the world more accessible. It's going to make connections that wouldn't otherwise be possible. Uh, and so that's what I'm really excited about, and, and getting that aircraft into, into service so we can, we can achieve our ultimate goal of making the world dramatically more accessible. Let's get back to talking pilot things. I mean, put your mind back to flying the airplane today. You've got a lot of experience. Um, tell us about XB-1 compared to the other aircraft that you've flown. Uh, I think maybe the best way to explain this to some of my Navy buddies is this is the closest thing to flying off the boat that there is to flying off the boat. And what I mean by that is once it gets off the ground, it's easy. It's getting it back on the ground. That's, that's the challenge. Uh, so once I took off, you know, I'm, I'm kind of in my happy place. And, and when she was supersonic, it was, that was the smoothest, like best flying uh, that, she, that she's flown yet. Like supersonic flight was really her, her happy place. Uh, she really liked it there, and it was a real it was a real dream to to fly XB1 supersonic. Uh, landing is always always a bit of a challenge, um, and today was today was no exception. Uh, landing off the the forward looking vision system or our augmented reality system, uh, something I practice a lot in the simulator, and I'm grateful to uh, Zach Pleiss, Wingnut, and Charles Wickware. Uh, Wing sorry, Zach Pleiss Sprite and Charles Wickware Wingnut for our as our landing signal officers who. Help me get back on ground every, sing every single time safely. Well, we could see from the outside, and you got it absolutely on the numbers, in right the place, right time, bang on the center line. So what a great job for you and all those around you. Blake, you touched on um, the future. There have been a lot of naysayers about the future of supersonic aircraft, and yet you're, you're convincing people that it's doable, and you're convincing people that it will happen, and you've got now this demonstration of your capability how do you continue to convince people that this is the future? We just need to keep doing it. You know, there's um, uh, there's always going to be naysayers, and um, but that's they don't make the future. Um, uh, we get to choose to do that, and I, I think that the, the history of, of flight is just such a poignant example of of how how that really works. You know, of course, the, the first airplane was built by bicycle entrepreneurs. Uh, he, he, in no way, shape, or form were the favored team or had the resume to do this. And, you know, and shortly before they, they did, you know, the, the naysayers were saying it'd be a million years before we ever had an airplane. Um, but they pulled it off. And, uh, and then we had a half a century of just really steady progress and speed. Uh, we had Concorde, and then we, we kind of lost our way. Um, and the, the, the future, you know, it, the future is not automatically better. Um, somebody has to make it better. And I think, uh, and that, that's why I'm grateful for the, the opportunity, for the team, for the support. And uh, success, is, success is absolutely not guaranteed. Uh, Overture is very, very much harder than, than what we flew today. And the, it will not be a straight line path from here to success. There'll be twists and turns, there'll be setbacks. It's, uh, it's virtually guaranteed. Um, but the important thing is not giving up. And um, maybe one day we'll have a skeptic's flight across the Atlantic. <laughs> and can you, would you like to compare for us your philosophy within Boom Supersonic about how to go about building exciting airplanes compared to the, the legacy major aircraft manufacturers that are out there right now? Do, do you do it the same way or do you do it differently? Uh, we think we should do it faster and better. Um, you know, in, in the... In the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, air, airplanes uh, were developed very, very rapidly compared to what they are today. And, and yet today we have better technology and better tools than ever before. And uh, the, the, yet this, the safety bar has come way up. And you know, I think it's, it's our job to figure out how to move fast um, at, while also staying safe. And, uh, and we've, we've learned a lot on the XB1 program about how to do that. Uh, but how to build a culture of safety, but also what other things go into the process that cause us to be slow or, or enable us to move fast. And, you know, it's easy to look at XB1 and see um, you know, a beautiful airplane. I, I look at it and I see, I see a lot of lessons learned, uh, not just the technology of the airplane, but how we went about it. And, you know, I believe, I believe small, mighty, vertically integrated teams can, can do things that the, uh, that the big guys wouldn't even attempt. And that's, uh, that, that's our future. 
We're coming towards the end of our Q&A, so I'm going to ask the same question of both of you. Uh, I'll ask you to answer it in turn, not together. The, for the people here, and there's a wonderful crowd here of great supporters who've been really enthusiastic, and the people all over the world that are watching on live stream, what one memory would you like them to take away from today? Geppetto. I'm sorry, I need a second to think about that. Maybe. Okay, maybe. Blake. <laughs> oh, I was really glad you asked him first. <laughs> um. I, I don't know if it's about today exactly for me. Um, is it, it's, it's been 10 years to get here. And if I could, if, if, if there's any one thing I could just share with the world, it would be to work on the biggest, most important things you can always work on. And, uh, and whatever you do, don't, don't give up. And, and if you do that, then you get to have days like today. Thanks. Geppetto? I think what it, uh, I think that what I will remember and what I hope other people take away from this is that uh, what, a, what a small team of really dedicated people can make happen. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Geppetto and Blake. <laughs>